Hey guys, today we're doing the unboxing of the Frozen Sonic Mini and talking about the first couple of prints, the good, the bad, and the ugly of this machine. So right here's the contents. You get a funnel, gloves, two scrapers, a build plate, and power cord. And inside you have a plastic vat. Now talking about the plastic vat off the top, that's the only bad negative thing I have to say about this machine. After a week of use, five days really, I went to clean it and noticed cracks. I've seen on a Facebook page other consumers were talking about the same thing and I went to go clean it I noticed the cracks so I wanted to clean it really well and I said well I'll keep trying because I've seen other people talking about it and they had no issues let me talk, stop right here and talk about this this is the only thing you have to do besides the build plate is put on these feet they are rubber little feet with 3m tape you just push them on I'm showing you how to do that right here and then you'll set up your build plate with the Allen wrench. And I'll talk about that as it comes along in the video. This is the first time I'm powering it on. But yeah, as I went and cleaned my vat and poured new resin, I'm using Frozen's resin. I actually had a leak and it got onto the screen and all over the printer. And it came out the side of that vat. So I stopped using it. I reached out to Frozen. I have to congratulate them on replying very fast and sending me another plastic vat I was still unhappy because I didn't want to use another plastic vat and have that same issue and then they uh, responded and told me that they was gonna put an aluminum vat on Amazon and they would have a discount code I seen it on Amazon I bought it without the discount code I reached out to them I told them I bought it they asked for my order number and then they refunded me the $12.99 so I think it's 59 or 49 without it and then it knocked it down to like 38 so 229 for the machine and with the aluminum vat I think it is a must that everybody switches over to the aluminum vat if you're using the plastic one and it's not failed you it's just a matter matter of time let's talk about some of the specs real quick it has a 2.8 inch touch panel the slicer software is the chitu box the printer volume is 4.7 by 2.6 by 5.1 so that is the frozen resin and anytime you're messing with resin I suggest you wear the gloves and the mask the stuff is pretty strong you don't want to get it on your skin or breathe the fumes so you need to shake that for about two minutes before you pour it in and this is me doing that right here for my first print 20 minutes into owning the machine unboxing and everything so like I said I bought it the ease of use is great I mean very easy so I set up my first file it was on Chitu box I sliced it with my own supports and I use minimal supports and this is the first time the build plate is going into the resin I suggest you don't pour too much resin just enough to cover that build plate that is another negative that I have about it is the build plate doesn't have slopes like some of the other printers or even their other printers that they have in their line so I found a, a, a way to do that you'll see later on in the video the first time I get this print, I spill resin everywhere trying to figure that out. And here it is, the lock and key set from the show off of Netflix with minimum, minimum supports. It came out very well. And here I am trying to fumble around and you'll see me kind of spill some resin. And then the next print I do is, you'll see it coming up. Uh, I use the scraper. That's my trick now is to use the scraper on top of that build plate and as it's printing and comes out of the resin, just scrape along and push the resin back into the vat and you won't have that issue. These were a little bit longer and you see it dripping and I get a little bit here, a little bit there, but I clean it up promptly with some alcohol and that solved that issue. But as you can see, they came out very well, high detailed. You will need to put this under a UV light to get the resin to harden and cure. I use water, uh, hot water, and a toothbrush, and also rubbing alcohol to clean my prints. So here's my second print. It is a rat off of uh, a build off of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It's a big scene where when the rat's part of the part of the scene in the background. So this was just part of that print. And here I am. Look, the resin's on top of that build plate. I'm trying to figure out what to do. And as I'm doing this. I use the scraper and I clean that off to get less spillage. And once again, I did use my own supports and I used minimum supports and I just went, how I did it, I went along the body and I figured, you know, where it needs to go 
it has a long tail so I'll put supports there and uh, I can recommend this to anybody but you will have to spend the extra money for the aluminum vat that's the only downfall of this machine and I'm hoping sooner or later that they will make a bigger machine with the same screen because I like the fast fastness of this printer and I like that the screen lasts for you know more than a couple of hundred prints where the other uh, printers you know they'll end up having to be replaced a lot sooner so you can see the high detail in this once I get these supports off and give it a paint job this thing looks like a little rat <laughs> So I'll be doing a video coming up talking about the supports and what to do when you remove them and they leave marks or holes or divots in your print and how to fix that. A cool little trick I found. So uh, if you have any questions, write down below. I'll get back with you. I am the extreme hobbyist. I do a lot of hobbies from metal work, leather work, and airbrush, and painting and drawing, and 3D sculpting on ZBrush. Now that is my Deadpool print from the Artillery Sidewinder. That's the two FDM machines that I do own. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Until my next video, I'll catch y'all later.